All right, for our final topic in lesson number one, we are now dealing with primes. So every non-zero integer n, except plus and minus one, has at least four distinct divisors. So namely, they are one, negative one, n, and negative n. So this is always going to be true. For every non-zero integer n, this is always going to be true. Plus or minus 1 is going to divide it, and plus or minus itself is going to divide it. So we say an integer p is said to be a prime if p is not equal to 0 or plus or minus 1, and the only divisors of p are in fact plus or minus 1 and plus or minus p. So really the only thing that divides it is 1 in itself, but we're also saying it could be negative 1 or negative itself. So with this definition comes the following theorem. Let p be an integer, and again, p cannot be 0 or plus or minus 1. Then p is a prime if and only if p has the following property. So whenever p is a divisor of a product of two things, then p has to divide b or it has to divide c. That's not an and condition, and or. It's simply, it's going to divide one or it's going to divide the other. So this gives us a way of being able to, to determine when something is in fact a prime. Now, we can extend this idea, which is what the corollary is going to do now. So the corollary is if P is a prime and P divides a product of things, so we're going to say it divides a product of A1 all the way up to AN, then P divides at least one of the AIs. It can divide more than one of them, but it has to divide at least one of them there. Now, I'm not going through improving all of these because a lot of these things we've seen many of times before throughout high school. Again, I want to more formalize these things, but we want to be able to use these in the next little bits coming up. So another theorem that we have, or our last theorem for at least this video, is every integer n except 0 and plus or minus 1 is a product of primes. So this is the whole idea of prime decomposition. We can take any number that's not 0 or plus and minus 1, and we can write that as a product of primes. Now, always going to be true. So let's try an example here. We want to decompose. I have 1,852,423,848. And I'm going to say I'm going to be able to write this as a product of primes. So let's get to the worksheet here. So this is exercise five. So to decompose this as a product of primes, again, this is 1,852,423,848. So the first thing that I know is this number is in fact even. So if it's even, I can divide it by two and two is a prime number. So this is two times 926,211,924. And again, noticing that what's in here is also even. So I could factor out another 2. So I could write this as 2 squared. And what's remaining here is 463,105,962. Uh, and again, still even, I could factor out another 2. So this is now 2 to the 3. And what do I have left? I have 231,552,981. All right, so now it's not an even number, so I can't factor out a 2. I can try 3. And 3 is going to be a factor here. So this is 2 to the 3 times 3 times what's left when I factor out a 3. Well, that is 77,184,327. Well, the number is getting smaller. Not quite small enough yet. 
And again, it's not even, so I can try dividing out another 3, and it will work. So this is 2 to the 3, 3 squared, and what I'm left with now is 25,728,109. All right, at this point in time, I try 3 again, it's not going to work. Then I could try other primes. And I'm going to notice that the next prime I could take out is going to be 11. So again, 2 to the 3, 3 to the 2, 11, and I'm left with 2 million, 338, 919. And again, I'm going to notice that I can do 11 twice. So 2 to the 3, 3 to the 2, 11 to the 2, and what I'm left with is 212,000. 629. And again, if I keep going through this, I'm not going to be able to factor out another 11. The next problem I'm going to be able to take out is a 19. And again, you can verify at home that this is correct. There's going to be three factors of 19 I'm going to be able to take out. So I have 2 to the 3, 3 to the 2, 11 to the 2, 19 to the 3. And what do I have left? 31. 31 is a prime. So I've taken a number and I've decomposed it into a product of primes. I might have said that was the last exercise. This is going to be the last exercise for, for this video uh, lesson here. So in exercise 6, if A, B, C, and D are integers and P is a prime factor of both so P is a prime factor of A minus B, and P is a prime factor of C minus D. So we've already established what a factor is. Again, if I could take a, a number and decompose that into a product of things, each one of those products is a factor. So when I'm saying something is a prime factor, then one of those multiplications in there is a prime value. Now we know, again, from the last part there, that we can take any integer n and decompose that into a product of primes, as long as it's not 0 or plus or minus 1. So if I have A minus B, I could write that as a product of primes. C minus D, I could write that as a product of primes. But I'm saying this prime P, this specific prime, if it's a factor of both, then P is also going to be a prime factor of if I take A minus B and C minus D and I add those together, I'm going to get exactly this A plus C minus B plus D. And we'll show you that in a second. Um, but this addition of these, these two things is also going to lead to having a prime factor. Let's get some more space here. This one's not too bad to go through. Actually, it's relatively quick to go through. So exercise number six. So it tells us that A minus B has a prime factor P. So that means I could rewrite this A minus B as P times some X. And same idea, C minus D has a prime factor. So I can rewrite this as P times some Y. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two things together. So A minus B plus C minus D. This is equal to PX plus PY. Now I can rewrite my left-hand side as A plus C minus B plus D. And I can rewrite my right-hand side since both terms have a P factor or a P, yeah, P in its factor, I could take it out. So P, X plus Y. And again, we have exactly that, that P is a factor, and I have X plus Y as whatever the, the next product is going to be inside of there. 